Another um, important thing is that I have seen that AIMS people, like INZ people, they are always asking you the question over the corneal ulcer, always, always. And mostly they are asking you about fungal corneal ulcer. So you should be very, very clear to find out the differences between the bacterial and fungal ulcers. Okay. A patient with a foreign body with pain, photophobia. Now they have actually tried to confuse you also with the itching. Now ideally the word itching should not be used here. I do not know if it is a recall um, mistake or it was actually there itching because ideally uh, itching should not be given here. Itching is word that is used for the allergic conjunctivitis or allergic keratitis. So they should not have used this word and they have given you the history of fish tail trauma. So fish tail trauma means they have given you the vegetative trauma. So whenever they have given you the history of vegetative trauma, it's very, very clear that it's a fungal corneal ulcer. It's a fungal corneal ulcer. So basically, it is more important to identify whether it's a bacterial ulcer or whether it's a fungal ulcer. Now, once you know that uh, it's a bacterial ulcer, you can easily tell the characteristics, you can easily uh, tell the treatment. Once you know it's a fungal ulcer, again, you can easily tell the characteristics. But the thing is identification. Okay, so one very, very important thing is whenever they are giving you history of trauma with the vegetative matter, it becomes very simple that it's a case of fungal corneal ulcer. Now, even simpler from this is that they haven't asked you that uh, which ulcer is it. They are just asking you the sign. So what can you see? So this is but obvious. This is hypopion because what you can see is the pus. It is the pus in the anterior chamber. It is the pus in the anterior chamber. So we can have hyphema, aqueous flare, hypopion, uh, whatever. So you have to know the what are the differences. When I say it is hyphema, when I say it's a hyphema, it is actually the blood. It is the blood in the anterior chamber. When I say it's a hypopion, hypopion, that means it is the pus, pus in the anterior chamber, right? Now, what is the difference when hypopion is due to bacterial ulcer and when it is due to fungal ulcer? So, we will try to understand when it is bacterial hypopion then bacterial hypopion will always be sterile and always be mobile. While if it is a fungal one, if it is a fungal corneal ulcer, then the fungal uh, hypopions, they are always non-sterile as well as non-mobile. Non-sterile and non-mobile. So once you know, this will again help you in differentiation. Then you... Uh, always remember that in cases of fungal, the signs are always more than the symptoms. They are always more than the symptoms. So when you are getting a lot of signs, especially what are the signs of fungal corneal ulcer? Again, very, very important. Usually uh, one of the, one or two signs are always given in the question. Like it will be um, grayish or it will be dry looking. It will be having the raised margins. It will be having the raised margins. Then we will have the feathery margins. F for fungal, F for feathery margins we can have. Then F for finger-like extensions. Very good. We can also have the finger-like extensions. That can also be there. And due to these extensions, we can have multiple small, small lesions. That will be called as the satellite lesions. This will be called as the satellite lesions. They are dry looking, grayish with the raised margins, with the feathery mar uh, raised edges, with the feathery margins, with the rolled out margins, finger like extensions, satellite lesions and um, immune ring of demarcation. We can also have the immune ring of the demarcation that can be there. And uh, what is the name? What is the typical name of this immune ring? This is called as the Wesley's, Wesley's ring. Immune ring of demarcation that is called as the Wesley's ring. 
along with the hypopion. So I told you the two characteristic features and usually hypopion is a big hypopion. We do not have vascularization and that is why the risk of perforation is also rare. Now one important thing, I have written here that signs are more than the symptoms, right? Is one shot revision sufficient for inset? Uh, yes, exactly. See, high yield topics remain same whether it's a neat or whether it's inset. The only the way of asking of the question is different. So you have to understand that your important list, important topics remains the same. So please go through it and uh, they are very, very high yield before your insert also. Please read all the uh, and go through all the one shot sessions as well as their PDFs. Okay. All right. So I was saying that I, I am saying that signs are more than the symptoms, but don't misinterpret that we cannot have symptom in the fungal. We can have symptoms in the fungal, but signs are always most prominent. So don't just rule out fungal corneal ulcer on the edge that pain is written in the question. You can have pain, but pain is not the most prominent thing that occurs in the fungal corneal ulcer. Rather, it's the signs which are more prominent and we can also have pain, uh, pain in the fungal corneal ulcer due to the added secondary bacterial infections. So be very, very clear. First, see the signs. If you are having these signs and uske saath, I am saying pain is also there. You cannot rule out fungal corneal ulcer by pain because you cannot have all these things in the bacterial ulcer. So please, first rule out the other options also. Look at the other signs also and then take the decision. Alright? 